In this video, we'll be clarifying some concepts of the lesser sac. Let's just get our bearings a little bit first. So we have the diaphragm here, cutting away these organs one by one for a better view. We have the liver, we have the stomach, we have the lesser omentum here, and we have the spleen down the back, a little bit of the kidney there as well. We also have the aorta and part of the inferior vena cava. So I've cut our model in this plane because I want to bring up uh, an image that you may have seen before, which is from an old version of Gray's Anatomy. And this shows us pretty neatly the boundary of the lesser sac. This blue bit here represents the peritoneum that bounds the lesser sac and all other peritoneum is in red. So let's draw that out on our own model. We see the entry involves the lesser omentum as the anterior wall, the peritoneum that covers the stomach, and we encounter the gastrolienal ligament which attaches to the spleen. We're going over the kidney because it's a retroperitoneal organ, and the same for the aorta and the IVC. This opening here we'll address next, that's the epiploic foramen. This is, in one plane, the dimensions of the lesser sac. As you'll see further throughout this video, the lesser sac has quite bizarre dimensions, so it can be really hard to visualize, but hopefully this video will go some way to addressing that. Getting rid of that image now, I'm going to access the sagittal plane for the majority of the rest of this video. Before I do that, let's just have another look at the stomach with the lesser omentum attached. As you may know, the greater curvature of the stomach gives rise to the lesser omentum, which originates in the liver. Let's bring in the rest of the liver to see a bit more of that. Take out that. Okay, so the lesser omentum you can see here, and remember that that forms the anterior border of the lesser sac. We're going to bring up another image, which I imagine you'll be familiar with, also from Gray's Anatomy. This cursed image. Let's move our sagittal plane in, cutting through the liver, the large bowel. And now we reach an, an important landmark regarding the epiploic foramen. That's the gallbladder. So once we've found the gallbladder, we know we're not too far away because to the anatomical left of the gallbladder, we'll soon find the, the entrance to the lesser sac. Moving on, okay, and now look at that. We have found the entrance to the lesser sac. I know that because one of the boundaries of the epiploic foramen is the IVC. So having encountered the IVC, we know we found the epiploic foramen. And the other borders of the epiploic foramen are the first part of the duodenum, the free anterior portion of the lesser omentum, part of the liver, and then part of the, IV, uh, the IVC as well in this area. Okay, and if we now have a little look around, that should line up fairly well with where we define the entrance to the sac from the other angle. It's overshot it a bit, but that's okay. All right, so what I want to do now is keep moving this sagittal section back this way to the left and provide you with a, a couple more sagittal sections of the lesser sac to give you an idea of its dimensions throughout. Back we go. Up until the midline. Okay. So... Let's draw the boundaries of the lesser sac in the midline. Let's use the anterior border, which is the lesser omentum as a starting point. We're going around the stomach because peritoneum imbaginates organs in that way. And then we're following the line of the greater omentum all the way down like this. Back up again to the posterior abdominal wall covering the retroperitoneal organs, like the pancreas, up to the liver, 
and back we go. We now have a look at that as well. So it's a very different set of dimensions to the entrance. Let's move a bit further along with our sagittal plane now, close to the end of the lesser momentum. Again, following the lesser momentum, going around the stomach, down the greater momentum, into the posterior abdominal wall, covering a little bit of the spleen, a little bit more of the stomach, back to the lesser momentum. Okay, and then we have another section. Okay, so as I mentioned, the the dimensions of the lesser sac overall are quite bizarre. But if you can piece together these sections in your mind, we get a pretty good idea of how the space changes throughout the sagittal plane. And we're going to leave it there. Thanks for sticking with us. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you hit subscribe and we will see you next time.